Hey everyone, in the last video we made the snake game. It comprised of various modules by Pygame. This time we would make the tic-tac-toe. It would be a little bit more complex than the snake game, but don't worry, if you are clear with the basic modules of Pygame, you won't have a problem dealing with this. Let me discuss what all functionalities we need to put in to make this tic-tac-toe. So you need to draw a board, right? Uh, you know tic-tac-toe is played on a 3x3 three three grid. So for that, you need to draw that board. You also need to get the images loaded. What images I'm talking about, I'm talking about X and O symbols. We won't be sketching anything manually. Uh, we would just be rendering the images of X and O symbols at the place we want to. We would also need to print the results on the screen. We would also need to check which row or column has similar uh, symbols so that we can strike that out and uh, declare a win. Okay, we would also need to declare a function where we can get the coordinates of our mouse click and put our picture over there, paste our picture over there. So to get all this, I have defined five functions and we would put them together to make this tic-tac-toe. Cool. So what the five functions are, we would draw the board, one, we would get the results printed, two, we would check the winning cases, we would check all the rows and columns if there is a win. We would also need to get the coordinates of the mouse click. We would use the mouse module, that's a new thing for you. And we would put the pictures at these coordinates. That would be the image rendering part. Cool. Let's get to the code. So I'd be importing Pygame, initializing it. Then I'd be declaring some basic variables. Okay, so don't worry if you don't understand their purpose. Uh, you would understand it once we start manipulating them in the code further. Cool. So I have this XO, it would hold the current value uh, of the symbol, whatever symbol we are working on, whoever, whosever turn it is. Okay, then we have a winner, it would store the winner, X or O, and declare uh, and print the message. Then we have draw, it is initialized to none right now, but if it is a draw, it would be true. Okay, it's a boolean basically. Then I have this board, it's initialized as a 2d matrix with no values none values and it's a based ma a matrix basically of 3 cross 3 uh, of size 3 cross 3 then we have this clock object and then i have the screen then i have set the caption then i have rendered the images i have this in the tic-tac-toe file so accordingly i have mentioned the path okay then I have scaled the images because I want them in a block. Okay, we have this nine, these nine blocks and I want it in the same shape. Okay, I want it in the same size basically of the block. Okay, then we have our first function, the draw grid. We would be drawing the board with lines. I have filled the screen with some color. Then I have drawn the lines. I would need two, two vertical and two horizontal lines. I hope you can get that because I need to draw three parts okay so I'd be drawing the vertical lines first so I have used the line function by draw module the screen is the surface I would need to make this uh, make this lines on then I have given the color of the line then I have the start and the end positions okay so the start and end positions need to be visualized by you uh, just like you would visualize a point on a coordinate axis Okay, so 400 by 3 comma 0 would be a point on the x-axis, right? So 400 by 3, why 400 by 3? It's because I am making three parts of the complete board. And what is the length of my uh, screen? That is 400. And by 3 gives you the one one third part of it. Okay. Similarly, 400 by 3 comma 400 gives you the last point. Okay. On the x-axis, but at the bottom. Cool and 6 is the size of the line similarly for the second line i have multiplied the same thing by 2 so that is just an interval ahead of the previous line okay hope that makes sense to you then to draw the horizontal lines i have just flipped the uh, coordinates because now i'd be taking coordinates on the y-axis just like i took coordinates on the x-axis to draw the vertical line i take points on the y-axis to draw the horizontal lines okay it should not be problematic at all if you can visualize a coordinate plane cool then i'd be defining the result function just for printing the result on the screen 
So I have made the draw and winner variables global so that I can work with the same variables throughout. Now, if I have a winner, X or O, a message would be printed. Like I would have a message that would be a string and that would, the, would be the winner's name and one. Okay, similarly, if draw is true, my message would be game draw. Now, just like we would display a simple text on the screen, I have done that. I want my message to be rendered on the screen, to be displayed on the screen. It's the same code that we used in the display text. Nothing is different. Then I have this win cases function to check if all the symbols along a row or column are same. Okay, we would check it nine times right after every image is rendered. Okay. Now, just as I said, we would check along all the rows, the columns, and the diagonals. So, to check along a row, we would run a for loop so that we can change the value of the row 0, 1, and 2. And we would check if all the symbols along that row are same. That's what the if condition does. And the element we are checking should not be none. Okay. If it's not so and all the symbols are same, then we would, we would assign the winner to be that element okay and we would draw a line across that row how we would do that we would use the line function from the draw module and since we want to draw a horizontal line please know that we would need to take coordinates of the y-axis so we have the start point to be 0 comma row plus 1 into 400 by 3 minus 400 by 6 now row plus 1 is because the indexing starts from 0 and we cannot take 0 to be something and I have subtracted it by 400 with 400 by 6 because I want the line to be the half of it okay half of the block and so is the case with the endpoint okay and then I'd call to the result function because I wanna if there is a winner then I want to call the result function so that the result is printed and no further game is being played okay Similarly, for the column, I would have a loop to traverse through all the columns and I'd check accordingly if along a column the symbols are same, then I'd assign that value, that element to the winner variable and uh, then I'd draw the line along that column. Since I want a vertical line now, I would be taking points on the x coordinate, okay, x axis, sorry. And this start and end point again should make sense to you. Just as we did above, I want the line to be at the half of the block. Again, there is a factor of 400 by 6 subtracted from that value. Cool. Then again, I'd be calling out to the result because I want, to, uh, want the results to be printed if there is a winner. And I'd break this loop. Cool. Then to check along the diagonals, I would have two diagonals. In a matrix, there are two diagonals, the principal diagonal and the other diagonal. The principal diagonal uh, runs from left to right, whereas the other diagonal runs from right to left. And uh, it's the conditions are very similar. You check along the principal diagonal if the symbols are same. If they are, assign winner that value, that symbol, and draw a line along it. And call on to the result function again to print the result. Similarly for the other diagonal that runs from right to left. Now, if there is a draw, then how would you check that for all rows? If all is true, that means all the blocks are filled now and the winner is still none, then it's a draw. Okay, the draw boolean is now true and you'd call on to the resolve function. What the resolve function would do is it would check the condition for draw and uh, the message would become game draw and the text displayed on the screen would be draw. Cool. Now I have this get image function which takes an arguments row and column but you would not understand this until you understand this input to block function. So let's get to the input to block function. What it does is it gives you the position of the coordinates you clicked. So basically it is to find out which block is clicked on board. There are several blocks and once you have clicked inside that block you would get the row and column as a result of this function. Then to get the coordinates of the mouse click, we have this mouse function by Pygame. We have this mouse module by Pygame that has a function get position. We get the x and y coordinates of that mouse click. And if the x coordinate is less than four by, uh, 400 by 3, 
the first vertical line, the first part, then it is column 1. Else if the value of the x coordinate is less than 400 by 3 into 2, that means it's less than the second partition but greater than the fo uh, first partition, the first vertical line, then it would be column 2. Please note that I have used the else if condition for doing the same thing and not if because I want to check the second condition only if the first one is not satisfied. And then there is another else if that is the x coordinate is less than 400 which would be the last column, the third column. Cool. Similarly for assigning the row, I have checked the y coordinates accordingly. Now if the row and column are assigned some value and that board position is empty, it's none, I would call on to the get image function. Please see to the indexing part, row and column are normal numberings. When you're using them for indexing, you need to decrease them by one. Cool. Now let's check out what the get image function does. So I'll pass on the row and columns I got from here and use them to get my image rendered at that position. But there is a problem. To render my image, I would use the blit function, but the blit function does not identify the row and column positions, but it identifies the destination coordinates. So we again need to convert this row and column to a position, okay, to a coordinate. These coordinates would be same for all the images, for all the positions clicked. To have a uniformity, I would need to again convert this row and column to a single position. The mouse coordinates would be very random and I don't want my images to be overlapping and that's why I have to do this. I have to declare another function to get the coordinates from row and column. Okay. So if the row is 1, row number is 1, I want a margin of 30. So the coordinate would be 30, x coordinate would be 30. And similar if the, uh, similarly, if the column is 1, the position y would be 30. I want a margin of 30. If it is row 2, then I'd be adding 30, the margin of 30 with 400 by 3 because I want the image to be rendered right after the second line with a margin of 30. Okay, 30 units. Cool. And similarly, there are conditions for the third row and the third column. Now I would assign the current symbol stored by XO to the board position that we got from the input to block function. And if XO was X, I would change XO to O because the turn should be changed now to O. And, I, and before that, I'd render the image at the given position. The X image and if I have XO as O, then there is this vice versa condition. I'd be pasting O's picture and now xo would be changed to x now after calling the get image function in the input to block function i'd call on to the win cases function which, uh, which would check if the there is any win in any row or column or along any diagonal so you should get that after pasting or rendering each image we would check if there is any win case okay now we are done with the five basic functions, the five parts of the tic-tac-toe game. Now we can move on to the main part of the program. I'd be calling the draw grid function and then I'll have my game loop. Cool. In the game loop, I have the events loop where one event is to quit and the other event is to check if there has been any click on the mouse. For that, we have the mouse button down method. If there has been a click on the mouse, then I'd call on to the input to block function. Don't worry, we would just get to the flow of the program if you don't understand how the program is interconnected. And then I would be updating the entire display. And uh, I've set up the refresh rate using the clock, out clock object. Now let's quickly see how the program flows into each other. I have just called on to the draw grid function in the main part. So if I call on to the draw grid function, what I'd see is I'd see a board getting rendered. Okay, I'd see a board with lines. And if I click onto the mouse, I would call on to the input to block function, which would give me the row and column and call on to the get image function which would help me paste my picture and then I'd call on to the win cases which would check 
if there is any wind along any row or column or diagonal and then I'd, from the win cases function I'd call on to the result function which would print my result if it is a draw or a win if there is no such win if there if no win cases are satisfied my tic-tac-toe game would take an inputs until all the blocks are filled with some image so now if I run this I play it twice just so I can check both the cases for X win or O's win and to check a draw. So this game is a draw and if I play it again, I have X1 message printed so everything is working fine. And if I quit, the screen simply goes away. Cool. Everything worked as we wanted it to work. And this was all about the tic-tac-toe game. Hope you understood whatever we did in this program, in the program. Thank you.